Okay, good morning. Uh, this is N0 MUA Mike Uniform Alpha Dave, Coffeyville, Kansas. And I've had a few people ask about my tower setup, wanting information on how I raise it up and down with no climbing. I've got three of these, they're 80 footers. Well, 70 foot a tower. And then I got pipe going up above the rotor, through the rotor, and up. Uh, the top antenna is 80 feet. And uh, they're wanting to know how I do this, so I thought I'd make a video. It's Ron 25G. Uh, I got this tower here is my VHF FM, FM only tower. I like talking uh, all over on 52 Simplex. Uh, start out with the, went to the junkyard and got a base plate, concrete plate, quarter inch thick, and I did some welding on it, made some, made a hinge, and, uh, I got a one inch solid piece of piping going through, making the center of the hinge, and, uh, Got it welded on real good to the plate. I found a Ron 25G base plate and it was too thin I thought so I added another piece of quarter inch to the bottom of it and welded it together. Made it a little beefier and uh, thicker and made a hinge there and welded her all up, painted it and uh, bolted, uh, started bolting tire sections to it. Uh, seven sections. And uh, then that concrete pad is about four foot thick, or four foot deep. It don't really have to be that deep because it really don't do a whole lot, but just keeps everything uh, supported. The base plate supported is really all it's doing. The guy wires is what really holds the, the tower up. Uh, then back here, there's four foot of concrete, holds this gin pole. The gin pole is pretty important. A lot of downward pressure is going on it. It don't exactly lift the tower. It helps, but uh, if I was to just rely on this gin pole to raise the tower, it would bend. It would bend right there at the concrete. Uh, I do have another piece of pipe inside of this one for added uh, support, but uh, yeah, there's a pulley up on the very top. This is uh, 20 foot up to the pulley to the ground, and then there's four feet in the ground. So it was originally, I think it's a four and a half inch by 24 foot piece of pipe. Uh, this is a 2,000 pound boat winch that came without any cable I don't believe there was cable supplied and I went to the local hardware store and bought some quarter inch aircraft cable I don't remember how long I bought but it's quite pretty long and I'll show you that here in a second this is a Dutton DL2000A winch works great I've got it bolted there and then tack welded on the side of the pole also. And eventually I'm going to take this off and put a electric 12 volt uh, uh, 9,000 pound uh, Jeep winch on here. I'm, I'm tired of cranking this thing. I used to be able to crank it all in one, one time when I go back up in the air, but now I have to uh, wait, rest a little while. <laughs> It'd be nice to have an electric uh, winch where you push a button. I might do that in the near future. Uh, I got a mess right now. I brought the tower down to do some maintenance. I got struck by lightning last week. First time I've ever been struck by lightning and it did some damage. Not to the antennas but to rotors. It, it blew all three rotors on all towers. I don't know how it did that, but uh, 
it got all three of the rotors. So I got a new rotor, just put it back into place, and uh, getting ready to crank the tower back up. Uh, this pole, very important if you do this, get your pole set. At the very top, there's the pulley. Cable runs from the winch up over the top pulley and then down towards the tower. I'll show you that in a second. But uh, there's two cables at the top of this pole that support the weight of the tower as I crank it up or down it offsets the weight and these two cables go over here into concrete pads in the ground two separate pads two separate cables and they are hooked where I can uh, mow around them if I want to disconnect them and uh, these are quarter inch cables and they're real tight right now there's there's a the tower is sitting there off the ground uh, there's weight on the winch and uh getting ready to crank it up i've cranked this tower up and down like this i don't know how many times i i try to replace the winch cable every three years just for safety and it's about due to replace uh the towers guide four directions not three four directions with Ron recommended guy cable. It's six strand, very tough stuff. And it's recommended by Ron. I called them and asked them uh, years ago. And they said, this is what we recommend for the Ron 25G. So I got it from Texas Tower. Wasn't cheap. So anyway, we'll go up here to the top of the tower or the middle and I'll show you this pulley system I rigged up and this took a little trial and error to get this right uh, first point the the cable goes up that pole winch cable leaves the winch goes up the pole back there comes up the top here goes to this first point here and it's a pulley steel pulley found at the junkyard. Uh, I built kind of an angle iron brace there to take some of the support on the tower where maybe it wouldn't, you know, bend the tower leg. Built that. That turns. I, every once in a while I'll uh, grease that up a little bit. Uh, depending on how much weight you got on your tower, it depends on where you put this pulley. You got to play with it. Just rig it up, hinge it up, rig it all up, set it out there and start. It took me a, a whole weekend to figure out where I wanted to permanently set this pulley, these pulleys, to where the tower will lift. Get back, you start lifting, get back and look at the tower and see if it's straight or bent as it goes up and down. I actually put some barbell weights on the end of the tower and act like uh, antennas before I mounted any antennas. Uh, this is the first pulley. It goes through that pulley, comes down along the tower, down about 10 feet, 15, I don't know, maybe 15, to another pulley, goes through it. This way the, the cable is pulling from two different points on the tower, not just one. Uh, this this kind of helps uh, the way it goes up evenly. The cable goes back to that pole and just below that pulley up there it's bolted or clamped back to that top of that pole about six inches from the top of the from below the pulley about six inches and the cable clamped permanently up there. So the, that way the winch, hand winch, is only pulling half the weight. If you run one cable and try to lift in from one spot, your winch is going to pull a lot of weight. This way, uh, if you run the double line it back to the pole, it only pulls uh, half the weight. 
and the, the dead leg cables pull on the other half. But this works real great. It's been up and down I don't know how many times. You know how ham radio operators are, they nothing's like it like they want. Up and down all the time. So uh, I got a lot of weight on the end of this. I don't know how much. Uh, you could probably figure it up, get close. Uh, I've got four M squared 12 element beams stacked, uh, co faced together. Uh, they're 11 feet apart and 11 feet apart from up and down, 11 feet apart crossways. Uh, brand new rotor. Yesu rotor and uh, power divider. It's uh, quite a quite an operation to get them uh, all matched in and everything. But they're about a 1.2 match. Uh, I had a GP9 up in the center of them. It got hit by lightning. It took a hit and uh, blew the top section of the GP9. Blew it, blew it up and uh, I don't have it replaced yet I'm leaving it up there what's left in case lightning decides to strike again hopefully it will hit this instead of my expensive uh, M squared beams uh, it's what it did last time it hit the GP9 didn't hurt the beams at all SWR's fine didn't there's no marks or anything on the beams. But there it is, getting ready to crank it up. And I probably won't show the whole thing cranking up because it, I'm getting older and it takes me a while. <laughs> and my arms wear out. And that's why I'm wanting to uh, go with the electric winch. But uh, it goes uh, up and down pretty easy. The north guy wires I leave fastened, they just tighten up as I lift. The south guy wires I had to disconnect uh, to lower it down. Uh, and also, usually these beams are pointing straight up in the air. I can adjust SWR with the, the antennas pointing straight up into space and they, the SWR doesn't change from the ground. Uh, I can have the reflectors six inches off the ground and the SWR stays the same as I crank all the way up to finished uh, level and uh, that's nice you can adjust SWR and not worry about it the reason it's they're pointing east right now is because that's the direction I was pointing when the rotor quit or got hit by lightning I was pointing straight east so that's where I'm back lined up to pointing east and I did go in and check SWR and they're, they're 1.2. Uh, even with them pointing uh, close to the ground like that. So I think I'm good. Uh, these towers have two separate grounds going in the ground. And uh, they hook up. This one stays hooked up. And the other one I hook up to the bolts when I'm finished cranking. The grounds didn't work too well on this lightning hit. And it was real funny, it come in to the GP9, the radios were all unplugged, coax pulled. It jumped across the PL259, jumped across and uh, hit the side of the radio, blew that radio. That radio arced over to another radio ICOM 706, it survived. Uh, and then from the side of that radio, it hit the amplifier, and there's a big burn mark on the side of the amplifier, and didn't hurt the amplifier. But uh, the only radio it took out was the Kenwood uh, TMV71, which is a FM dual bander. Took it out, but... Uh, and it took a TV antenna out that was mounted to the tower. 
for a bedroom TV and I did away with the uh, the TV antenna took it off the tower but anyway there it is uh, getting ready to crank up the four M squared 12 element beams back up to 80 feet top ones 80 feet uh, this is fed with uh, 7 8 hard line and uh, they work pretty good so all clear for now and uh, I hope that uh, answers some questions on the tower and if you have any questions uh, contact me uh, email and I'm gonna start cranking It's hard to do holding the camera. 73s.